Inside of the Nat, checking out one of the newer exhibits, the Living Lab. I'm not allowed to hold Rosie, but I have this uh, molten skin here. Don't go anywhere, more creepy crawlies up next. She's cute though, right? No? Yeah? All right, they're letting me deep down into the crevices at the Nat. I'm checking out the Herpetology Wet Lab. Sounds like a fashion line. It's just a lot of this. Thousands of specimens preserved for science. Look at this guy, he's so cute. He's like so cute. Hi. Checking out one of the newest exhibits at the Nat, the Living Lab. Lots of creepy crawlies in here. They're resting. Nah, no rest for the creepy crawlies. Come on in. Oh, hello, dear sir. Hello, welcome. <laughs> welcome into the Living Lab, I see. Yes, welcome to the Living Lab. I've got a, a nice big red diamond rattlesnake shed skin for you to wear. Okay, so it's kind of like Hawaii, but I'm inside the Natural History Museum. Exactly, exactly. This is very weird, it makes me uncomfortable. Tell me about the Living Lab. This is our newest exhibition which just opened and it features 30 of our living animals. These are from a collection that we've had here at the museum and we've brought them out to show to our visitors. They get to meet a variety of different animals and this is one of our animal ambassadors, a rosy boa. It's native to San Diego County. Many of the animals that you'll see in here are native to our region. And we want people to learn about them uh, so they fear them less and they have more excitement and empathy for these animals of our region. Yeah, because even the creepy ones need some love too, right? Exactly. She's actually kind of cute. Yeah, she's a sweetheart. From the living to the dead, I'm going deeper and deeper inside of the gnat where I'm surrounded by 75,000 specimens preserved in ethanol. So we'll just grab it by the body. Okay, I'm inside the twist it out. herpetology lab with Herpetologist Frank, we're gonna call you. Yeah. This is right. absolutely amazing. So many preserved specimens. Tell me, how, what do you do here? You categorize these or? So we document where they all came from and then researchers from local universities and other all over the world actually will ask us to come and use these to do research. I can take this one out? Yeah. Okay, hold on. Oh, there he goes. I mean, they're so well preserved. Mm -hmm. And how does this help us locally? I know you guys have some research going on. If there's a population that was there maybe 50 years ago, but for some reason they're extinct, we can start to understand like where did they used to occur and why aren't they occurring there anymore. We can go back and look and see if anything's changed in their environment. You can also do diet studies. So this one's actually been opened up oh, wow. and um, you can look at what was in their gut, what was in their belly when they were collected to understand more about what they eat. And they're preserved in ethanol, which is keeping them, I mean, it looks like they're alive, so maybe they can come up with something for humans to keep us young looking, right? Right, Herpy Frank? Yeah, is what I maybe, you? maybe. Okay. All right, well, we just put them back in here and we put them back? Uh huh. Okay. Perfect. Don't mind me, I'm just working away on a 43 million year old jaw. Maybe, I, I don't know what this is, maybe we'll find out. I'm taking you behind the scenes at the research demonstration lab at the NAT. Kinda looks like a dinosaur bone, I think, huh? No? To the dentist, but actually no, we're behind the scenes at the NAT in the hazard demonstration lab. Lots of paleontology going on here. I want you to walk with me because I'm gonna get to play with some fossils. Not really play, but you know what I'm saying, okay. This is Chris, he's a paleontologist here. Chris, you're gonna teach me your ways, right? About indeed. What do we have in front of me here? Goggles on. Oh yeah. This is a 43 million year old specimen found in Oceanside. It is a pro oreodont a dog-sized pig-like animal that used to roam San Diego. What? Exactly. 43 million years old. Correct. Things were really cooking back then, oh. and so it was a very tropical, subtropical environment, and these guys were just roaming wild. That is fascinating. So you're actually going to let me touch this uh, all sorts of wrong on your part here. Correct. So this is a scribe, and you'll hold on to the brass part and turn the body of the device, and then very gently 
you will remove the matrix. All right. So we're removing the sediment from the fossil. We're trying to uncover, this is a lower left jaw of the protoriodont. Uh, right here, the matrix, or the, that's just a fancy word for dirt, is kind of this tannish olive color, and then the bone itself is pinkish. Okay. All right, so, so grab that little brass part, and rotate the body. There you go. This really just makes me uncomfortable. No, no, okay. no, and then very light, so you don't have to add a lot of pressure. Right here? Yeah. Anywhere? Well, yeah. Oh, well, <laughs> well, all right. Do so I have to go like with the grain, with the jaw? Not necessarily. Some people like to go like in a down kind of like a motion, like singular, and then some people scribe back and forth. Can I like write my name in here? <laughs> Wait, I want to know what made you want to become a paleontologist. I can't turn it off. There we go. <gasps> Looks good. Being out in the field and finding fossils. Yeah. It's very exciting when you find something that's been buried for hundreds, if not millions of years, and it's amazing, yeah. And it's really fun to find something that's older than me. No. 36, 43 million years old, let's focus on that. There we go, thanks Chris. Thank you.